Good morning, Gateway. Good morning, church. Welcome to the house of God. Today, I declare fullness of expression of praise and worship to the King. Give Him praise, words and actions. We sing this praise with smile. Amen, Gateway. Let's worship Him together. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's all cover heads. Today we bless your name, God, and we rejoice. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's all bless name. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. Draw near to worship Christ the Lord and bless his name. His holy name, declaring He is good. Come on, come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord. Draw near to worship Christ the Lord and bless His name. His holy name, declaring He is good. Oh, that man would praise Him. Oh, that man would praise Him. Hey, rejoice in the Lord. Oh, Again I say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, again I say, rejoice. Yes. Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord. Draw near to worship, rise the Lord. And bless His name, His holy name, declaring He Good. Come on, come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, draw near to worship Christ the Lord, and bless His name, His holy name, declaring He is good. Oh, that man would praise Him, oh, that man would praise Him. Yes, yeah. rejoice the Lord always, again I say. Again I say rejoice in the Lord always Again I say, again I say rejoice in the Lord always Again I say, again I say rejoice in the Lord always Again I say, again I say rejoice Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Who oh, that man would praise his name, praise his name to the ends of the earth. Who oh, that man would praise his name, praise his name to the ends of the earth. Who oh, that man would praise his name, praise his name to the ends of the earth. Oh, that man would praise his name. Yeah. Again I say, Again I say, oh again I say, again I say. Come on, clap your hands. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, again I say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, again I say, yes. In the Lord always. Again I say, again I say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, oh come on, sing it again. Oh rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, again I say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, again I say, and again I say, again I say, again I say, again I say, and again I say, again I say, and again I say. Again I say, rejoice, hallelujah, oh we rejoice in you God, we rejoice, thank you Jesus. Come on, give me praise, oh thank you Jesus, thank 
you, God. I'm just going to pick my pick over here. <laughs> it flew. One more praise you, God, but it's all good. Amen. Gateway, we believe that our words matter. The, word, the Bible says the word became flesh. So we understand, as believers, we understand that our words affect matter. That's why our words matter. Amen. As believers, we choose to worship Him with our words. We choose to speak blessings through our words. Amen. It's like the inside reflecting on the outside. What's within us, we speak it out. The Bible is true when it says, when the Bible says, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And we choose as believers to worship the King. Amen. If we do that together, gateway, we reap all the benefits of worshiping God. Hallelujah. Can we give you praise? Oh, we are so ready to worship you, God. And who's ready for it? Who's ready to worship the King? Hallelujah. Let's worship Him together, King.
Come on, gateway, give you praise. Oh, we are in all of you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Praise his name. Come on, gateway, give him praise. Shout of joy. Praising to our King. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, once again, Gateway, you sounded really good. We are blessed here. It's about time to bless our neighbors, bless our brothers and, Chris, brothers and sisters in Christ. Come on, move around and bless them with your beautiful smile. Amen. Hey Gateway, happy Sunday. Welcome to church. It's another great day to be in God's house. As usual, Sunday is the best day of the week, so good for you for getting up and making the decision to be here in church today. If you're a guest with us today, we want to say a special welcome to you. We pray that you feel so encouraged during today's service and so welcome here at Gateway, that this is a place where you can feel comfortable and at home. If you are that guest, we'd love if you do us a favor and fill out what we call a connect card. You'll find one of those cards under the seat in front of you or on the table at the back of the auditorium. Simply fill it out and drop it in one of the giving boxes at the end of today's service. These cards just serve as a way for us to be able to connect names to faces here at the church. If you're here at church today and you don't have your very own Bible, a copy of God's Word, we want to make sure you have one in your hands before you leave church today. The Bible is so important to our Christian walk and we believe that having a tangible one in your hands is extra special when you're reading God's Word. So if that's you, you don't have a Bible, we'd love to make sure you have one. At the end of today's service, head to the table at the back of the auditorium where you will find a friendly Gateway volunteer ready to give you your very own Bible. Make sure you're staying tuned to our online church calendar for everything you need to know that's happening here at the church throughout the week. All of our connect groups are listed there. Also, please be reminded that this coming Saturday, we have a brand new connect group starting at 9.30 a.m. This is our book reading connect group, and they're starting a new book called It's On The Way by Pastor Lisa Osteen Combs. If you'd like to get in on this study, it's not too late. You can sign up at the info desk today. All of you junior youth and parents, please be reminded that your next event is today following the second service. The event will start at 1 and go until 3. Many of you know that one of our missions interests here at the church is supporting a church in the Philippines. Four years ago, this church was started under the leadership of Hope and Charlene from here in the church. They had a vision to see this church started on their family's property in the Philippines because there was no church accessible to the people that lived in this area. The church has grown and prospered. They built a building four years ago. They expanded on that building. And now, once again, they are expanding to add more people into the church building. They also have plans to build some more buildings on the property so that they can continue to advance the mission of helping the people in this area. Hope and Charlene told us that one real need in this community is summer clothing. So this is something we want to get behind. We feel as the church, this is something easy that we can do to bless some of our friends in the Philippines. So here's what we're asking you, Gateway. We priced it out and the best option for us is to collect summer clothing for babies up to adults here at the church and then ship it off to the Philippines. So next Sunday, we'll be bringing you a date that is the drop-off date to deliver your brand new or gently used summer clothing for all ages here at the church. So stay tuned next Sunday for our drop-off date for our Church in the Philippines clothing. Thank you, Gateway, for your obedience to God's word and giving into the local church, bringing your tithes and offerings and helping us to advance God's kingdom right here in Regina and with our missions partners. There's three ways that you can continue to give today. The first is by bringing your giving in person and giving in one of the giving boxes at the end of today's service. The second is by heading to gatewayonline.ca slash give and following the prompts to give online. And the third is by text to give. Simply text the word give to the number that's on the screen right now. Now, one more point to leave you with before Pastor Brian's message today. At the end of today's service, one of our Gateway volunteers will be at the center entry where you entered for church today. Our volunteer is going to be giving out a book, one per family only, please. This book is a gift from Gateway to you because we feel that it will be a blessing to you and something that can be used as a witnessing tool. The book is called Where Did All the Missing People Go? And it is by Pastor Jimmy Evans. So stay tuned to Pastor Brian's message for more information about this book. So that's all I got for you. Now, Pastor Brian, over to you for Summer is Coming, part two.
All right. Good afternoon, Gateway. Who's feeling good about being in church today? Come on, just turn to somebody right now and say, it's Sunday again. Oh, yeah, you got to say that one with enthusiasm, right? I hope that really is your true sentiment. You just look forward to Sundays. You know, Barb didn't have to, you know, get me up this morning and say, come on, get up, get ready. You are going to church whether you like it or not. No, no, no. We did not go through that, uh, that uh, conversation. Man, I just love going to God's house on the Lord's day. How about you? Come on, somebody say amen if you feel the same way as I do. It is just so smart to show up in church on any given Sunday. Today, we are going to wrap up our little mini-series on the theme of spring, right? Spring is the, the season of spiritual renewal. You know, every mother in Saskatchewan knows that, that one of the, that the sure signs of spring is puddles and rubber boots. You know, one day there was a, a school where the kids were all out on the playground for recess. And then when the bell rang, they came back into the school. And there was one, one young guy, he was missing one of his rubber boots. And, and the teacher said, Mason, where's your other rubber boot? And rather proudly, he, he said, oh, it's up on the, the roof of the school. She said, how did your boot get up on the roof? He said, well, we were having a kicking off your boot contest to see who could kick their boot the furthest, and I won. <laughs> I think that's what you call bragging rights. Huh? Yeah, all in a day's work for a school janitor, right? Get out the ladder and find that boot. Come on, before we get into this message today, would you stand to your feet and would you boldly repeat after me, I love God, therefore I love the Word of God. The teachings of Jesus are my greatest counsel. My pride and passion is to follow His example. Say, the Bible is truth to my spirit, joy to my soul, and health to my body. Help me, Lord, to know the book and walk the walk. Amen. Come on, if you believe that Jesus is coming back, how about giving him a standing ovation? Come on, church. He's coming to get us. Yeah, he's going to take us home. Amen. You can be seated. And just a quick word to those who are watching online. So good to have you joining us today as well. Listen, if you appreciate this teaching, just hit the like button. If you do not like what you're hearing in this sermon today, just hit the dislike button because, of course, we want you to be honest, right? <laughs> we are Christians after all, right? Come on, again this morning, one more time. I want to read from one of the books of the Bible. This one is called The Song of Solomon or sometimes referred to as The Song of songs. And it's a very unique book of the Bible. It's a poetic love story, you know, the sweet talking dialogue between King Solomon and the Shulamite girl. But more importantly, this book of the Bible symbolically gives us a picture. It's a, it's a foreshadowing of the romance of redemption, right? The courtship between Jesus and the church. Everybody say, I am in love with Jesus. Amen. Let that be a true word. So let's read again from the Song of Songs, chapter 2, beginning in verse 10. My beloved spoke and said to me, he said, arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. Wow, it is just, it is such a romance. Uh, Solomon says, come, my darling. He said, you are beautiful, and, and now the weather is beautiful. Let's go for a long walk and a long talk. So in the past couple of weeks, we emphasized that 
Winter is over and summer is coming. But then there is this transitional season in between. So spring has sprung, right? It's a season of renewal, a season of revival. So, so this engagement period is all about preparation and anticipation of a summer wedding, the rendezvous of the bridegroom with his bride, otherwise known as the rapture of the church, right? Folks, we're living in the springtime of God's prophetic calendar of events. So last Sunday, we talked about summer is coming. And we talked about, you know, winter is over. And, and so Jesus is coming back in the, in the summer season of God's overall plan of things in the big picture. Jesus is coming back in the summertime. Our wedding day is coming. Just turn to your neighbor and say, you have a date with destiny. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's coming for you. But the question is, okay, listen. Winter is over. Summer is coming soon. But the question that looms is this. How do we handle this spring season between now and that summer wedding? Right? During this engagement period, how do we conduct ourselves while we are awaiting the bridegroom? So I am proposing to you. I'm not getting down on one knee to do it, but I want to propose three ways to prepare for marriage. So if you were here last week, you recall, we, we already covered two of them. Number one was this, make an invitation list. Who are the people that you want to invite to, to come to heaven with you? And then number two was this, wait patiently for your wedding day and for your wedding night. Now, that was last week, so if you missed it, you can always go online, get yourself caught up, just so that you won't feel like the student who missed class, and, and, and when you missed class, they were covering some material that's going to be on the test, so I don't want you to be feeling that way. So if you missed the last couple of Sunday sessions, you can always go on online, right? But today, let's look at the third way that a bride can make herself ready during this spring season. Remember, that was what we read last, last week in Revelation 19, verse 7. It says, the bride has made herself ready. So three ways to prepare for marriage. Last week, it was make an invitation list. And then number two, wait patiently for the wedding day. And today, let's talk about number three. And it's this, receive marriage counseling. Yeah, receive marriage counseling. Allow me to explain. You see, the reason for marriage counseling, whether it be pre-marriage counseling or, or whether it's counseling for a couple who are already married, the reason why there is this thing called marriage counseling is because not everything about married life always goes beautifully, no matter how beautiful your fiancé is. You see, the, the nature of marriage and the nature of the engagement period is that it is subject to some ups and downs. Come on. There's so many things to be said in favor of, of being in love. I mean, love is grand. If you know that to be true, say amen. Wow, there's something about the love of God and being extended to us and getting into our system and makes us want to love one another. Wow, when the love of God is flowing and having its perfect work in us, there's nothing better than love, my friends. Love is good. Love never fails, the Bible says. Love is so awesome, but the fact is marriage is not always a piece of cake. You know, wedding cake. It's not always like that, you see. For the couple who are crazy mad, head over heels in love with each other, someone needs to sit down with them and give them some counsel. Would somebody please sit down with that young couple and offer them some, some reasonable advice? You know, it might be the pastor, or it might be a professional marriage counselor, or it might be mom and dad, or it might be a trusted Christian friend, but would somebody please sit with this couple and give them some sound advice? Why is marriage counseling so important? 
Because we need this reality therapy. We need somebody to speak right into our lives and help us to understand even before we get committed to marriage. We need to know that there, there are some ups and downs in married life. There could be a little conflict here or there. There could be a little strife, a little difference of opinion, perhaps even a little bit of arguing along the way. Possibly there could even be this thing called break up and then kiss and make up. You know how that works. She gets the kiss, he gets the make up, right? <laughs> you know, the proverbial plucking of, of daisy petals. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. There can be some ups and downs relationally. Many of us have been there. There's a reason why the traditional wording of the marriage ceremony includes this expression, for better and for worse. There, there can be a little bit of worse added into the mix. Now, hopefully there's way more of the positive than the negative. And I know what I'm talking about because as a pastor, you know, sometimes we pastors get caught in the crossfire. You know, you got a, you got a couple that, that starts planning for their wedding, and, and next thing you know, there could be a little bit of tension in the air. There's more than a few times over the years that I've been walking through this with a, a couple, and, and they're believers, and they want to have a Christian wedding. In fact, they want to have an alcohol-free wedding reception, but they have some family members who can't quite understand that concept. They got some family that are like, what are you talking about? No booze at the wedding reception. Well, if that's the case, I'm withdrawing my financial support from this hugely expensive event. In fact, honey, I may not even be there if there's no alcohol on the premises. Oh, my goodness. How do you feel about seeing a bride cry? The point is, as wonderful as it is to be in love and to be engaged, preparing for a happily ever after wedding, there, there will be some stressful moments. There are going to be some, some difficult issues that we, we have to be able to push through and, and overcome, right? Come on. Somebody say, His grace is sufficient. Come on, say it again. His grace is sufficient. Yeah, you might want to try that one on for a side. Go home. Later on, say it about a hundred times until it gets right down into your spirit. The grace of God is sufficient to be able to rescue us from any of these petty little arguments. His grace is sufficient. You better believe it. You know, at, at times, you might even have doubts. Wow, should I call this relationship off? Should I break this? One pastor was concluding his final session of pre-marriage counseling with, with this young couple, and then he turned to the, the groom-to-be, and, and, and the pastor said, well, young man, do you, do you have any reservations? Young guy sat up in his chair. He said, oh, yes, sir, in Cancun, Mexico. <laughs> How many of you know that's not what the pastor was asking? Do you have any reservations? Like, do you have any hesitations, right? Do you have any doubts about marrying this girl? Do you have cold feet? <laughs> Folks, how many of you have done an engagement period? Like, you got engaged and, and you got married, but, but through that entire engagement period, in all of your planning and preparation for not only the wedding, but the marriage to follow for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, in all of that, that engagement period, how many of you would be able to honestly say that, that during that engagement, it was all 100% smooth as silk, not a single word of strife, like perfect harmony start to finish. Let me see your hand. What? You mean Barb and I are the only ones? <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> of course not. You know, I will never forget the day. We were just weeks away from, from our wedding. And, and I don't know what, what it was we were talking about, but I started spouting some, some doubt and unbelief. And that girl, she turned on me and she so stiffly rebuked me. I mean, I was taken aback. 
Like, she's a relatively new believer of, you know, maybe three years or so. And, and, and I'm the one that, you know, grew up in a Christian home, Bible college graduate. I've already got three years plus of full-time ministry serving as an assistant pastor. And she's rebuking me like, like she always, ever since I've met her, she's always been in a general sense a little bit more mature than me. But even at that stage of the game, in some ways, spiritually speaking, she was more mature than I was. And I I'll tell you what, she had gotten a hold of this powerful biblical truth about, about the, the, the power of our words. You got to speak the language of, of faith and not doubt and unbelief. And, and whatever it was I was saying, man, she put me in my place seriously. And, and I was shocked. Oh my goodness. My initial reaction, I was thinking, I don't know if I can follow through and marry this girl. But given some, some time to reflect on it, I came to my senses and, and realized, what, what in the world? This is exactly the kind of woman I need in my life. And sure enough, when the day came, she, she said, I, Barb Lear, do take you, Brian Larratt, to be my lawfully wedded husband and, and to be my project by faith. I will get you retrained. <laughs> no, she didn't say that during the ceremony, but I'm pretty sure she was thinking it. <laughs> You understand the season of engagement is so special. It is so sweet. It's so emotionally exciting. But there will be, come on, let's be honest. There will be some difficulties that, that we have to navigate. So there's going to be some stuff that we have to, to rise above it in order to, to, to claim our bride or our groom. You know, when you make that personal decision to believe and receive Jesus as your Savior, like it's the smartest decision you ever make in life. It's the greatest gift that you ever receive, the gift of salvation. And you are, you are joining the, the most happy family on planet Earth, the family of God. It is just such a wonderful situation to get yourself into becoming a bona fide, born-again Christian. When you get the gospel, when you make your positive response to the fact that, wow, the Son of God came to take the blame for us. He laid his life down to effectively take responsibility for our crazy sin issues so that we could be offered forgiveness if we would just take God up on his offer and say, I realize I need Jesus in my life. I need to be spiritually reborn. So let's do this. Come on, Father God, let's get on with it. I put my faith in the saviorship of Jesus Christ, and I'm ready to follow him around from now on. What an intelligent decision that is. And so when we, when we make that, that choice, to become a genuine Christian, wow, it's all good. But in the process of, of comprehending the gospel, we receive some sound counsel. We come to understand that the Christian life, it's not all wonderful. It's not all blissful. It's not all blessing. Yes, the church is the best ship afloat for sure. No question about it. But there will be some adversity. There could be a few bumps in the road. There are certain aspects of, of the Christian life that are downright difficult. It's not always, you know, home, home on the range, you know, where never is heard a discouraging word and the deer and the antelope play. It's not like that song. Listen, there's so many things about following Jesus that are just so awesome. I mean, so many amazing New Testament truths that belong to those who belong to Jesus. But, but there are some obstacles. There are some challenges that we will face. You know that. In Song of Songs chapter 8, Verse 7, so we're getting down to the final chapter of this love story, and Solomon wrote these words. He said, many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. What a true word that is. If you get a revelation of how powerful the love of God is. Wow, love is so enduring. Love is so resilient. Love will so hang in there and not give up easily. 
I tell you, love is supernatural. The New Testament counterpart to that verse about unquenchable love there in Song of Songs. In the New Testament, it's 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7, where it says, love always perseveres. Yes, sir. That's how love does. Love always, 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 always means always perseveres. Now, don't put your hand up. Don't say amen, but how many of you have ever been in a relationship, and then what do you know? She dumped you, and you were heartbroken. Oh, man, I've been there and felt that. That is emotional upheaval, but your love will persevere. You will continue your search, and you will find the girl that will make you forget about that other girl. Yes, you will. One day a man was a guest at a wedding. He got there, he got there early, and so before the ceremony began, he ducked into the, the washroom, and, and there in the washroom was this young guy that was wearing this really sharp tuxedo, and so this guest, he said, oh, you must be the groom at this grand occasion today, and, and the young guy said, oh, no, he said, I'm not the groom. I'm the best man, but don't get me wrong. I would love to have been the groom today because the bride at this event is a real catch, if you know what I mean. But, but no, I was eliminated in the semifinals. <laughs> so at least he made it to the final four, right? <laughs> Do I detect a, a tone of heartbreak in his voice? Listen, love will press on. Many waters of disappointment cannot quench love. Holy Spirit, help us to really get a grip on this. Folks, the whole point of the message today is that in this spring season, as we anticipate this summer wedding, this summer rapture event, this is a season that we are currently in. It's a season for us to, to push through and to persevere despite some of the crazy issues that we are up against in our generation. What a time we are living in. Imagine being alive in the 21st century. You know, when you think about God's prophetic calendar of events surrounding the main event of, of Jesus' return, what will it look like on planet Earth in the springtime just prior to the summer season of the rapture? What's it going to look like? Well, may I suggest it'll look pretty similar to what's going on right now. Although things will intensify. But check it out in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. See if this sounds at all familiar. The apostle Paul writing to, to young pastor Timothy and he says, but mark this. He says, Timothy, mark my words. There will be terrible times in the last days or in some translation says, in the last days perilous times will come. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, but instead treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. My goodness, it sounds like the Apostle Paul could have written that yesterday. Folks, would you agree with me that, that the springtime is a combination of, of good weather and bad weather, especially in Saskatchewan, isn't it true? I mean, in the month of April, you could be having cold and windy weather, or, or you could be having warm and gloriously sunny weather. It's a combination. Listen, the spring that precedes the rapture is going to be a mixed bag. So much good. And yet some bad mixed in. Just, just you watch and see. In the last days, there will be revival like never before. But there will also be some devival. Many people turning to the Lord. But there's going to be people turning away from the Lord. Sad to say. In Matthew chapter 24, the disciples were quizzing Jesus about the signs of the times that, that would signal uh, the, the end of the age, the end of, of life on planet Earth as we know it. And, and, and so Jesus gave them a little bit of a weather forecast here. 
Matthew 24, beginning in verse 10, Jesus said this, boys, at that time, the time when I'm going to be coming back, many will turn away from the faith. And will betray and hate each other. Can you imagine how it would pain the heart of Jesus to be saying that? People are going to turn away from me. They're going to be hating each other. And he said in verse 11, many false prophets will show up. They'll appear on the scene and they will deceive many people. Could be a lot of deception in the earth because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Do you see in those those words of Jesus there, do you see the the mix of, of good and bad? He said there's going to be people turning away from the faith, hating each other, deception, uh, hearts growing cold. Everybody say, yikes. Yeah, that's not good. But on the other hand, the gospel will be spread like never before. The assumption being that many will be responding to the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, yay. Oh, yeah, revival and devival at the same time. Verse 13, but, but those who stand firm in the faith, those who hang in there will be saved. They will be happily married. Thank you very much. You see, we are not fair weather friends of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, many turbulent waters cannot drown out our love for the Lord. That'd be a real good spot to say amen. Amen. So Jesus said, tough times will come. The Holy Spirit affirmed that as well. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, clearly says, not maybe, The Holy Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith. Man, I believe that there's going to be just unprecedented movement of the Holy Spirit, supernatural works of God, people just turning to the Lord in droves. I believe that when it comes right down to it, wow, there's going to be a lot of people calling on the name of the Lord. Say amen if you want to. Want to add your faith to mine? But I tell you what, there's also going to be some, some serious opposition to what the Holy Spirit is trying to accomplish there. There will be some gorgeous weather in the spring season before the Lord comes, but there will also be some lousy weather. But through it all, our love for Jesus cannot be quenched. Amen. But may I list for you today some of the issues that we're facing during this spring season that we call the last days of the last days. Have have you noticed any of the following issues that are kind of symptomatic of this spring season before the Lord comes back? Yeah, Yeah, ever seen any of this? There is a blatant attack going on these days against the Word of God. So much antagonism toward not only the Bible, but but the Christian community in in general. And there is such just a plethora of belief systems and philosophies floating around out there that are so contrary to Scripture. I mean, there's a lot of of things that people are, are speaking and believing these days that are just so bizarre. There's a movement of ecumenicalism. I mean, nothing could be further from the biblical fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father unless their name crosses Jesus' desk. He's the only way of salvation, my friends. And yet, there is a huge movement stirring in the earth. Well, let's just all get together and embrace everybody's beliefs. That's not happening in the finality of all things. 
And then you have political corruption and deception. I mean, the restricting of personal rights and freedoms. There is some legislation that is being passed into law these days that is so horrendous stuff that should be just causing alarm bells to go and be going off in the spirits of, of Christians. No kidding. Media bias against conservative Christian values. The agenda for a cashless society, a a one world monetary system. Clearly this is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Have you noticed that there's an increasing number of, of companies nowadays, even here in Regina, companies that will not take your cash. They will not do business with you on that basis anymore. What's that pointing to? There is a a fear factor. There's a a fear of financial collapse. One man said this. He said, the only money that goes as far as it used to is the loony that rolls under the bed. (laughs) (laughs) Globalization is a real thing. The, The new world order, basically the Tower of Babel, revisited. It's all paving the way for for the the one world government of the Antichrist. But meanwhile, everybody say meanwhile. Yeah, meanwhile, you and I, we are maintaining our allegiance to the Christ, never mind the Antichrist. Somebody say amen. Amen. You know, the great irony of the last days is is that there's so much international chaos and, and conflict. There's warfare, nuclear threats, all that kind of stuff. But at the very same time, there is a strong sense of, of rallying for international unity and, and collaboration among the nations to try to create a one world system. Wow, do you see the irony there? War and peace. Sounds like a novel, doesn't it? Jesus prophesied. He said, there's going to be famines in those last days before I come back. There's going to be pestilence, disease, pandemic, super viruses. There's going to be natural disasters, floodwaters and and fires, hurricanes. It's all happening as we speak more than ever before, my friend. Not to mention the issues of racism, so much moral fuzziness, terrorism, darkness, and, and depravity. There's, there's gender identity, confusion. The list goes on and on and on. Not to mention persecution against believers. I mean, why would it surprise us? Jesus forewarned us, right? John 15, verse 20. Jesus said, if they persecute me... Uh, they're going to persecute you. Count on it. John 16, 33, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You will have tribulation. Read my lips. But take heart. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Amen. We're in good shape. Oh, yeah. All hell can be breaking loose around us, but we are secure in Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Somebody say Amen. You know, there's a ministry called Open Doors, and they have compiled what they call the World Watch List. So they've recorded statistics to gauge the crimes committed against Christians. And and the most recent data that they've been able to give us is from the year 2021, so a few years ago. But in that one year, multiplied millions of Christians are living in regions of the world where they are under high levels of persecution and religious discrimination. 4,000 761 Christians martyred for the cause of Christ just in 2021 around the world. 4,488 churches and other Christian ministry facilities were under attack, in many cases completely destroyed. 4,277 believers were detained, arrested, sentenced, imprisoned without a fair trial. And in many cases, they, they were subjected to various forms of torture. That's just 2021. It's continuing on. Things are getting worse. But thank you, Jesus, things are getting better as God is stepping up his measures as well. Listen, it's not just animosity toward Christians, but also hatred toward Israel. Keep one eye on Israel in the news if you can find a credible source of of news information. But keep an eye on Israel. Keep one eye on China. 
Keep one eye on Russia. Keep one eye on Syria. Keep two eyes on Jesus all the while. Somebody said, Pastor Brian, how many eyes do you think I have? <laughs> Listen carefully. All of the above that I just mentioned in that, in that list, it's all around us, and it's happening during this spring season prior to the rapture. But I'm telling you, it will intensify. It will intensify. Everybody say intensify. There's no better way to describe it than really to compare it like Jesus did to, to childbirth. So I don't speak from experience, of, of course, but I, I'm just reiterating the, the illustration that Jesus himself used in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 and 8. The closer we get to the rapture, the more frequent the labor pains will become and the more intense. Oh, things are going to heat up on, on the face of, of planet Earth. How many of you have felt any degree of, of persecution against you because of your identity as a Christian? Pretty sure we've all felt some of that. Anybody mocked you, you know, to your face or even behind your back, and yet it always gets back to you, you found out about it. Any persecution? You got any, any haters? Have you suffered any injustices by virtue of your position of faith in Christ? Ever been overlooked for a promotion in your workplace and you're pretty sure that it's because you are a Christian? Goes on every day out there. Folks, the whole point of today's message. So that's all introduction. Now we're getting to the sermon itself. Just teasing you. But the whole point is this. The engagement period is not without its difficulties. I think we get that. In this spring season of God's prophetic calendar. Of course, there's going to be some challenges. There many waters, deep waters, turbulent waters, cannot quench our love for Jesus. Planet Earth is really messed up, but the good news is the cavalry is coming. Our fearless bridegroom is coming. Meanwhile, everybody say meanwhile. Yeah, while well, we are waiting for Jesus to come back during this spring season, no matter what goes on around us, we love him. I said, no matter what is shaking around us, we still love the Lord. In fact, more than ever before, that deserves a strong amen. Let me give you one more verse of scripture. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which of course is the authoritative chapter in the Bible on the subject of the resurrection of, of believers. And, and so in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul makes reference in the last several verses of that chapter. He references the, 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 the event known as, as the rapture. It's, it's the return of Jesus. In verse 52, he says, in a moment of time, in the twinkling of of an eye with a loud trumpet blast. Yeah, Jesus is coming back. There's going to be a rapture slash resurrection of believers. Man, I felt like using as a subtitle for this message today, coming soon to a planet near you. <laughs> He's coming back, my friends. Just turn to somebody right now and say, Maranatha. Yeah, that means the Lord is coming but listen while we're waiting for him there's a few verses a few verses later on down at the at the end of this chapter here's what paul says he concludes his thoughts on the return of the lord the twinkling of the eye the trumpet blast jesus is coming we're out of here but meanwhile verse 58 Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Stand firm. Yeah, as you wait on the return of the Lord, stand firm. Let nothing move you. As it says in the old King James Version, be steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord. He, he goes on here. He says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's not all for nothing to be, to be claiming that Jesus is coming back. No, the fact is he's coming back. There were so many Bible prophecies that he would come the first time, and he did. And for every one of those prophecies that he would come the first time, there's at least three Bible prophecies that he's coming back the second time. You know he's coming. Man, the signs of the times are so ripe. They are so lining themselves up with what the word says. He's coming back. I guarantee you, Jesus is coming. We don't know how soon that might be, but things are certainly looking like it could be sooner than later. So how do we conduct ourselves during this spring engagement period as we're waiting for the return of the lover of our soul? That's the question that we need to wrestle wrestle with a little bit because Paul says here, listen, don't let anything move you. Don't be soon shaken. You know your place in Jesus Christ. You are totally secure in the Lord. So whatever is going on around us, never mind. In Jesus name, we're in good shape. We're in love with the Lord. And I'll tell you what, that love cannot be quenched by any worldly craziness. I love a God cannot be quenched by many waters. Somebody said, wise is the man who finds something to do while he's waiting. Waiting is a lot easier when you occupy yourself usefully while you're waiting, waiting, waiting. (sighs) He's coming back. But meanwhile, You and I are busy about our Father's business. We're reaching out to others. We are worshiping the Lord day and night. We are doing all that we know to do to represent the cause of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody add in an amen here or there. You know it's true. He's coming back. But meanwhile, we got to just make sure that we don't allow anything to discourage our hearts. You see what's going on in the world. It would be so easy to be discouraged scars, but no, in Jesus' name, His grace is totally sufficient for us to clear any of these hurdles that we need to, to make it through this path and welcome our Savior back. I'll tell you what, the good news of the gospel is so much more powerful than the bad news of, of sin running rampant on planet Earth. Come on, would you stand to your feet? I think that each one of these little remarks that I'm about to make deserves a strong amen. Are you ready? Come on. Persecution cannot quench our love for Jesus. Economic fears cannot quench our love for Christ. Assaults on the scriptures cannot quench our love for the Lord. A strong spirit of deception in the world, even that, cannot quench our love for Jesus Christ. Even wars and rumors of wars cannot quench our love for God. How about another amen? Amen is right. Oh, Jesus, we so look forward to your return. We are in love with you. May we become more in love with you than ever before as we see the day approaching. And may we influence others around us that they also would become so in tune with the Holy Spirit as the the things of God's word are revealed to us. And, And as we see what's going on, in the newspaper headlines aligning themselves with Bible prophecy. This is an exciting, it's not a scary time to be alive. It's an exciting time for those who are the true children of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. My friends, can I just talk to you for a moment? As we stand before the Lord right now, if there has been any sense of 
fear and trepidation rattling around in your soul. When you think about all that's going on in the world, I don't know, maybe you're a parent, maybe you're a grandparent, and you're concerned that if the Lord hasn't come by then, what in the world do our kids and grandkids have to face? The world is becoming increasingly dark. If you have been concerned, if you have been been worried, if you have allowed anxiety to control you, as of this day, that's going to stop. We're taking authority over that fear. We're putting all of that fear and anxiety and nervousness, we're putting it beneath our feet where it belongs. And we're saying, no, in Jesus' name, I have the perfect supernatural peace of God ruling in my heart, ruling in my home, really ruling in my family line for generations to come if necessary. Oh, dear Jesus, we're not giving place to any of that, of that, that concern and, and that fear that says, but, but what about my finances? Never, never mind. Now, you need to do your due diligence and, and exercise faith in God. Believe me, the Lord is going to look after you, but we are not giving in to any of, of those crazy fears that will try to drown out our love for Christ. I'm telling you, your love for Jesus, and my love for Jesus cannot, will not be quenched by, by many waters of a world that has veered seriously off course. But oh, there's a Savior coming to rescue whoever will put their faith in Him. This is the good news. This is the outstanding news of the gospel. Man, as we go from God's house today, we have, to, we have to go with a strong sense of confidence, Lord. You're with me. It's all good. Oh, I look forward to your return. Jesus, I'm more in love with you than ever. I get it that there is some, some bumps in the road during this spring season, and I'm ready. I'm ready, Lord. By your, your grace, I will handle it. But oh, one thing I know for sure, Jesus, I love you. Nothing's going to disturb that. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, I take authority over any spirit of fear, any anxious thoughts. I take authority over it right now. As we all stand before you in this auditorium, Lord, this is your house. And we have positioned ourselves today for, for you to touch us, for you to speak to us, to you, for you to do some remarkable things in terms of renewing our minds. And so here we are. Lord, we're here because we want to be. And, and so I pray right now in Jesus' name, let there be just such a beautiful, powerful, lasting work of the Holy Spirit just causing us to walk out that door and to live by faith to be walking in love with Jesus Christ and to not give place to any fear of the future. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Before we officially dismiss, I want to lead us in a simple prayer of salvation. So whether you're here today or whether you're watching online, if you know that you need the Lord, in a moment we're all going to pray this prayer together. But with every head bowed and every eye closed in this personal moment of committing ourselves to Christ, if you know that you need Jesus, if you're not so sure that you're born again, but you really want to be, you want to be counted in on God's great plan for the days ahead, or maybe you've made a commitment to the Lord, but somehow you've drifted away from Him, and today is the day to rededicate yourself one way or the other. Just ask him for a simple show of hands before we all pray together. Just, just wave your hand at me if, if that's you. And you know I need to do this. Yes, I see your hand over by the wall on my left. I see your hand up here. Thank you. Are there others? Who else? This is your day to say, Jesus, I'm firming up my commitment to you. From now on, I'm walking with you. No swerving to the left or to the right, and for sure, no turning back. Anybody else? You just, you're just feeling touched by the Holy Spirit right now, and you just know, I need to do this. Anybody else? Yes, I see your hand over on my left. Thank you. 
Yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Come on, church. Let's all pray together. Let's affirm this with bold faith. Would you all follow after me? Let's pray this. Dear Heavenly Father, of course I give my life to you. Jesus, I know you're the Savior. You laid your life down for me. You rose from the grave to give me a brand new start. I receive it. Jesus, forgive me for all I've ever done wrong. Every sin. I receive that cleansing, that freedom from shame. I'm ready to get on with it. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Help me to live out the Christian life with a very lucid anticipation. You're coming back. And I'm going to be a part of that moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, church. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you for joining our online service today. We pray that this service was such an encouragement to you from the beginning to the very end. If you're in the Regina area, but you've not been to one of our services, we'd love to have you come and join us. There's a seat here waiting for you. But if you're not in the Regina area, we look forward to seeing you right back here next Sunday.